The kingdom of France draws its origins from the Franks, a tribe of Germanic barbarians that would conquer most of Roman Gaul by the 507th year of our Lord. They would be led by the converted Catholic Clovis I, the first king of the Franks and first of the Merovingian dynasty. In 714, Pepin the Short, son of Charles Martel, would be elected by Frankish nobles to become king of the Franks after a coup against the Merovingians and establish the Carolingian dynasty. The Carolingian Empire would collapse after the death of Charlemagne and be divided into three, with West Francia becoming the Kingdom of the Franks, France, with Hugh Capet being elected king and ushering forth the Capet dynasty in 987. The first use of the term Kingdom of France can formally be recognized with Philip II, who would be the first to use Francia Rex, King of France, and the last to use Francorum Rex, King of the Franks. Both Frankish and French kings would use Rex Christianissimus, or Roi Très Chrétien, to denote the devotion to Christ. Philip II lived from the 21st of August, 1165, to the 14th of July, 1223. Sixth of the House of Capet and son of Louis VII, he is regarded as one of the greatest French rulers. He would cause the collapse of the Angevin Empire, which in turn would engulf England into civil war and creation of the Magna Carta. He also defeated the Holy Roman Empire to such an extent that the emperor was overthrown and replaced by Frederick II. He was the first monarch to style himself as King of France. His nickname of Augustus would be earned for his territorial expansion. Louis VIII lived from the 5th of September, 1187, to the 8th of November, 1226, as the son of Philip II. During the First Barons' War in England, he would be proclaimed King of England by the local barons in London on the 2nd of June, 1216. He would lose his supporters and be excommunicated after King John's death. He would successfully conquer Guyenne from the English, leaving them with only the Gascony region. Louis IX lived from the 25th of April, 1214, to the 25th of August, 1270, as the son of Louis VIII. He would see the Albigensian crusade against the Cathars end in success in 1229. He would bring order to France with legal reforms and a reigning in on the disputes between nobles. He would defeat Henry III of England's attempt to restore the Angevin Empire. Louis would lead the failed 7th and 8th Crusades, by which he would die of dysentery during the later. His martial, administrative, and religiosity earned him the moniker of the ideal Christian ruler. He would be the only canonized king of France. Philip III lived from the 3rd of April, 1245, to the 5th of October, 1285, as the son of Louis IX. He would return to France from Tunis after the Eighth Crusade and be crowned king at Reims in 1271. Would begin French influence into the Kingdom of Navarre and gain personal control over the county of Alençon. After the Sicilian Vespers, Philip would begin the Aragonese Crusade, which would lead him to die of dysentery in Perpignan. Philip IV was born in 1268 and would die on the 29th of November, 1314. He was the son of Philip III and would be the first of the French kings to assume the kingship of Navarre through his wife, Joan I. He would also gain the title of Count of Champagne. He is described as handsome and imposing like a statue, earning him the nicknames of the Fair and the Iron King. He would install princes of his house to rule Hungary, his daughter's marriage to the English king's heir would eventually cause the Hundred Years' War. He would gain territory from Flanders and defeat the English in the War of Guyenne. He would move the seat of the papacy to France in Avignon. In 1313, Philip would vow to heed the Pope's call for another crusade in the Holy Land, but would die after a hunting accident before leaving. Louis X lived from the 3rd of October, 1289, to the 5th of June, 1316, as the son of Philip IV. He would be known as the quarreler due to his tensions with the nobility. 
He would continue his father's fiscal reforms and centralization, political reforms. He was an avid player of real tennis and the first person to build indoor tennis courts. He would issue an edict abolishing slavery within the Kingdom of France. After playing a tough game, he drank too much cooled wine and died of either pneumonia or pleurisy, though some suspect he was poisoned. John I lived only five days during the middle of November 1316. Born after his father, Louis X's death, he holds the record for shortest time as monarch in French history. His cause of death still draws controversy today. As many believe he was poisoned like his father, though in medieval Europe the child mortality rate was very high. Philip V lived from 1294 to the 3rd of January, 1322, as the son of Philip IV and younger brother of Louis X. He would establish French royal succession with the estate's general's decision to be strictly male inherited, known as Salic Law. His reforms included the creation of an independent court of finances, the standardization of weights and measures, and the establishment of a single currency. He would die from multiple illnesses and be succeeded by his younger brother, Charles IV lived from 1294 to the 1st of February, 1328. He was the 14th and last of the House of Capet, as well as the son of Philip IV and younger brother to both Louis X and Philip V. Known as the Handsome, in 1323 he would put down a peasant revolt in Flanders. In 1324 he failed to be elected Holy Roman Emperor. Charles would conquer the Duchy of Guienne in the War of Saint-Sardos leading to the English king to have to swear fealty to Charles, pay a fine, and accept rule of a much smaller territory in Guyenne. He would die without a male heir and be the last of the Capet to be king of France. Philip VI was the first king from the House of Valois and lived from 1293 to the 22nd of August, 1350, son of Charles, the Count of Valois, grandson of Philip III and cousin of Charles IV. He would be crowned in Rheims Cathedral on the 29th of May, 1328. Philip and Edward III would plan a crusade together in 1332, but in 1334, Philip gave David II of Scotland refuge, and by 1336, the French and English kings became openly hostile to one another. He would see the start of the Hundred Years' War and the Black Death, killing one-third of the population in France. He would die, leaving his country divided. The first of many pretenders to the French throne began with Edward III, the King of the English and of the House of Plantagenet. He disputed the established Salic law and claimed that he held valid claim to the French throne through being the nephew of Charles IV on his mother's side. He would go to war against the Kingdom of France after the Great Council of Paris had decided that Edward should be stripped of his continental territory after refusing to obey Philip's demand to extradite a criminal. John II was born in April 1319 and would live until the 8th of April 1364 as the son of Philip VI. He would create the currency known as the French franc. During his reign, he had to keep the kingdom from collapse from the Black Death, mercenary armies pillaging and English invasions. He would make peace with the English with the Treaty of Bretigny in 1360 at the cost of large territories, ransoms, and Edward renouncing his claims. After escaping captivity, John would shock all by sailing back to England to return to his captors. He would die in London in 1364. Charles V lived from the 21st of January, 1337, to the 16th of September, 1380, as the son of John II. Much like his father, Charles would battle the English and mercenary companies that terrorized his nation. He created a professional army, and with Bertrand du Guesclin, reconquered much of the lands France had lost. France and Castile would raid the coastline of England, and annihilate the English fleet at La Rochelle in 1372. A papal schism would occur after Pope Gregory XI died and a Roman mob surrounded the Vatican and forced them to elect Pope Urban VI on the 9th of April, 1378, while in September of that year the cardinals would leave Rome and Pope Clement VII was elected as Pope in Avignon with Charles' recognition. 
The pretender to the French throne, Richard II of England, was the grandson of Edward III and son of Edward the Black Prince. He lived from the 6th of January, 1367, to the 14th of February, 1400. He would seek to end the Hundred Years' War and was more concerned over the domestic affairs on his island. He would be dethroned and die in prison due to starvation. Some today speculate he may have had Parkinson's disease. Charles VI, son of Charles V, was born on the 3rd of December, 1368, and would meet his end on the 21st of October, 1422. He is known for his mental illness and psychotic episodes. During much of his reign, after suffering continual losses to the English, Charles would be placed under the regency of his uncles, the Dukes of Berry and Burgundy. Due to this, the nobility of France became more independent and divided. In 1415, the French were crushed by the English, led by Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt. He would sign the Treaty of Troyes, disinherit his son, and marry his daughter to his appointed successor, Henry V of England. Richard II had been removed from power by Henry IV, the grandson of Edward III. His reign would be preoccupied with putting down rebellions. His son, Henry V, would wage a genocidal campaign throughout France until his death on the 31st of August, 1422. Charles VII, son of Charles VI, was born on the 22nd of February, 1403, and would meet his end on the 22nd of July, 1461. Contesting his crazed father's treaty with the English, Charles would establish control in the Loire Valley. In 1428, fate would be on Charles' side, and he would begin to see victory over the English, eventually ousting them from most of France in an over 20-year period. He would be coronated in Rheims Cathedral on the 17th of July, 1429. He would run into continual confrontation with his son and heir, Louis XI. Unable to eat, he would eventually die and be buried at his request beside his parents in Saint-Denis. The English pretender to the French throne, Henry VI, son of Henry V and nephew of Charles VII, would be coronated as the King of France in 1431 at the Notre Dame de Paris. His continental possessions went from controlling almost all of France to just Calais by 1453. After the War of the Roses, Henry would see the loss of all of his power, the death of his son, and his own life in the Tower of London. Louis XI, also known as the Universal Spider, lived from the 3rd of July, 1423, to the 30th of August, 1483, as the son of Charles VII. After failing to overthrow his father, he would be forgiven and be given control of the Dauphine in southeastern France. He would flee to Burgundy after marrying the daughter of Louis, Duke of Savoy, due to his father sending an army to compel him to recant his decision. He would return to France after his father's death. Noted as highly calculating, he would negotiate the Treaty of Piquigny, paying the English to leave France and renounce their claims on Normandy. This would lead to the Burgundian state to collapse and the Hundred Years' War to officially end. He created a postal service, roads, Italian alliances, and further centralization of the nation. The last of the English pretenders to the French throne, Edward IV, was the son of Richard III, the Duke of York. He ruled in relative peace, but would be exiled for a short period prior to retaking power. He would invade France after becoming undisputed ruler of England in 1475. His treaty with France would leave him with just the Channel Islands and Calais. The English would never again be in a position to pursue a claim to the French throne and recover their lost land on the continent after this. Charles VIII lived from the 30th of June, 1470 to the 7th of April, 1498. As the son of Louis XI, he would be the seventh and last of the House of Valois. He would marry Anne of Brittany in 1491, avoiding Habsburg territorial encirclement. He would attempt to stake his claim on the Neapolitan throne, but would fail and march his army back to France. Charles would die after accidentally hitting his head against the top of a door at the Chateau d'Amboise. He would be without an heir and be succeeded by his second cousin once removed, Louis XII.
Louis XII would live from the 27th of June, 1462, to the 1st of January of 1515. First and only of the House of Valois Orléans, he was the great-grandson of Charles V, second cousin and by first marriage son-in-law of Louis XI. He would marry Anne of Brittany in 1498 to consolidate the union of Brittany and France. He invaded the Italian peninsula and conquered Milan and Naples. He would make a third Italian war, which resulted in a loss of Naples to Spain, but a clear division of Italy between the two kingdoms was made. He would die of gout and be buried in the tomb of Louis XII and Anne of Brittany. He would die without an heir and be succeeded by Francis I, his first cousin once removed and son-in-law. Francis I lived from the 12th of September, 1494, to the 31st of March, 1547. He was the first of the house of Valois-Angoulême and the great-great-grandson of Charles V. First cousin once removed, and by first marriage, son-in-law of Louis XII. He would promote the Renaissance in France, attracting Leonardo da Vinci to France. He would develop and promote the French language, earning him the nickname of father and restorer of letters. He would begin French expansion into the Americas, paving the way for the first French colonial empire. He would wage wars against Charles V, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and King of Spain. This would earn him the nickname of Night King. Francis would forge alliances with the Italian city-states and Ottoman Empire to stave off the forces of Henry VIII and Charles V. Francis' devotion to the faith would be demonstrated later in life when he put down heresies throughout France. Henry II lived from the 31st of March, 1519, to the 10th of July, 1559. He was the son of Francis I and had been named Dauphin in August 1536 after the death of his elder brother. As with his father, Henry would eliminate heretics within France and use foreign Protestants and Ottoman allies to destabilize Habsburg territory. The last Italian war concluded with France and the Habsburgs reallocating territory in Italy. It also removed England's possession of Calais. Henry would create the concept of patent laws. He would receive an untimely death after a jousting match. Francis II lived from the 20th of January, 1544, to the 5th of December, 1560. Son of Henry II, he would become the King Consort of Scotland from a marriage to Mary the Queen of Scots from 1558 till his death in 1560. Under the administration of Francis of Lorraine, Duke of Guise, heretical repression was continued. Due to his weak constitution, he would die from an ear condition. Multiple theories suggest he may have died from various diseases, including mastoiditis, meningitis, or otitis, as well as a suspicion that he had been poisoned by Protestants. Without an heir, his brother would replace him as King of France. Charles IX lived from the 27th of June, 1550, to the 30th of May, 1574, as the son of Henry II. He would fight in the First, Second, and Third Wars of Religion. Due to his massacring of the Huguenots at the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre in 1572, Charles crippled the heretical opposition. Charles would die of tuberculosis. Without an heir, his younger brother would take his place as King of France. Henry III lived from the 19th of September, 1551, to the 2nd of August, 1589. As the son of Henry II, he was the fifth and last of the House of Valois-Angoulême. He was the King of Poland and Grand Duke of Lithuania. As the Polish wished to have military support against Russia, diplomatic aid with the Ottomans, and financial subsidies, he would support further expansion into the New World. Due to the death of his younger brother, and according to Salish law, he would have had to have given inheritance to the throne to a then Protestant Henry of Navarre. He would issue an edict annulling Henry of Navarre's right to the throne. Labeled a sodomite and tyrant by all, he would be labeled a criminal by the French Parlement for his murder of the Duke of Guise and the Cardinal of Guise. This would cause him to flee to Henry of Navarre for help. Henry would be stabbed by a young, fanatical Dominican friar, Jacques Clément. 
who would in turn be killed by guards. On his deathbed, he would declare Henry of Navarre as the new king. Henry IV lived from the 13th of December, 1553 to the 14th of May, 1610. He was the first of the House of Bourbon and the 10th generation descendant of Louis IX, also nephew of Charles X and son-in-law of Henry II. He was proclaimed king on Henry III's deathbed. He would convert to Catholicism in 1593, securing the support of most of the populace. His Edict of Nantes, five years later, would grant religious freedoms for heretics, leading to an end to the French wars of religion. He would commission a massive amount of construction projects be built throughout France. His influence on art and architecture was so pervasive that the style became known as Henry IV style. After avoiding 12 assassination attempts, Henry would be killed in Paris by Francois Ravaillac, a Catholic zealot. He would be buried at the Saint-Denis Basilica. Louis XIII lived from the 27th of September, 1601, to the 14th of May, 1643, as the son of Henry IV. By 1617, Louis would exile his mother and execute her followers, thusly removing the influence of foreigners who did not possess true loyalty to the French. With the aid of Cardinal Richelieu, Louis would become one of the first examples of an absolute monarch, leading to a successful intervention into the Thirty Years' War against the Habsburgs and a domestic centralization of power by squashing a revolt of French nobility. He, along with the Cardinal Richelieu, would encourage an evangelization of French culture to the savages of the New World, unlike other colonial powers that encouraged extermination of the natives. Another joint project he had with the Cardinal was the establishment of the Académie Française. He would die of intestinal tuberculosis on the 33rd anniversary of his father's death. Why do you weep? Did you think I was immortal? The last words of Louis XIV. A man given the epithet of the great, like so many others of the past. It can be said as being an act of fate that he would chose the brightest star in the heavens to represent himself. As to when looking back to Europe's pagan past, the sun was the representation of their god Apollo, the god of peace and the arts, this sun of ours giving life to all things, rising and setting with unfailing regularity, thusly representing the power of the man who believed so strongly in the divine right of kings, known by all as the sun king. He lived from the 5th of September, 1638, to the 1st of September, 1750, and was the son of Louis XIII. He would gain uncontested control of the state after the death of his chief minister, the Cardinal Mazarin. He would continue the centralization of France and revolutionize warfare. He would revoke the Edict of Nantes and remove the Protestant presence in French society, thus stabilizing the state further. He would commission mass construction projects such as the Canal du Midi and the French Academy of Science. He would find victory in the Franco-Dutch War, the Nine Years' War, and the War of the Spanish Succession. The final war being a successful placement of a Bourbon king on the Spanish throne. He would leave the French state as the leading world power, but his expenditure would bankrupt the state. This financial weakening of France would lead to an eventual revolution less than a hundred years after his death. Louis XV lived from the 15th of February, 1710 to the 10th of May, 1774, as the great grandson of Louis XIV. He is described as being far too trustworthy of others and allowing others to lead him along, which would lead to a damaging of the nation's power, wealth, and a lessening of trust factor in the general population. Though he would lose the Austrian Netherlands and New France in North America, he would integrate the Duchy of Lorraine and the Corsican Republic into his kingdom. His patronage of the Enlightenment era thinkers and reallowance of admitting the followers of the Talmud back into France would inadvertently lead to the death of his successor. Louis XVI lived from the 23rd of August, 1754 to the 21st of January, 1793. He was the fifth and last of the House of Bourbon prior to the French Revolution. 
He was the grandson of Louis XV. An indecisive and liberal king, his inability to govern caused him to bankrupt the nation, bring about mass starvations throughout the realm, and the eventual abolition of the monarchy. His foreign policy is largely remembered by his alliance with the American 13 colonies and their war for independence. He would be executed by order of the state for treason, as he had been colluding with the coalition of foreign nations which sought to reinstate him to the throne. After his death, his sole surviving daughter would petition for her father to be canonized by the church, though this would result in failure. Though there would be future kings of France after the revolution, it can be said that their power was nowhere near to the extent which their pre-revolutionary forefathers had enjoyed.